Hi, I'm going to be reading from Tim O'Brien's The Things They Carried. And Tim O'Brien is a Vietnam vet, and he came back from the war and attended school. He went back for his college education and graduated from Harvard. He has been a novelist, a short story writer, and a teacher. He's even come to Hawaii to um, participate in an author's reading at University of Hawaii, Manoa. And his book was challenged as well as banned. Um, it was banned in Mississippi. And what's kind of unique is that it was um, challenged or banned uh, many years after it had been published and during sort of the time of the Gulf War. Um, so it's kind of um, interesting that, you know, of the timeliness of that. Um, Tim's writing about, in particular, a um, Vietnam War incidents. The reason why it was banned or challenged is because he writes about very graphic things that are happening in within the time frame of the, the war. The young soldier was trying hard not to cry. He too blamed himself. Bent forward at the waist, groping with both hands, he seemed to be chasing some creature just beyond reach, something elusive, a fish or a frog. His lips were moving. Like Jimmy Cross, the boy was explaining things to an absent judge. It wasn't to defend himself. The boy recognized his own guilt and wanted only to lay out the full causes. Waiting sideways a few steps, he leaned down and felt along the soft bottom of the field. He pictured Kiawa's face. They'd been close buddies, the tightest, and he remembered how last night they had huddled together under their ponchos, the rain cold and steady, the water rising to their knees, but how Kiawa had just laughed it off and said they should concentrate on better things. And so for a long while they talked about their families and hometowns. At one point the boy remembered he had been showing Kiawa a picture of his girlfriend. He remembered switching on his flashlight, a stupid thing to do, but he did it anyway. And he remembered Kiawa leaning in for a look at the picture. Hey, she's cute, he had said. And then the field exploded all around them. Like murder, the boy thought. The flashlight made it happen. Dumb and dangerous. And as a result, his friend Kiawa was dead. That's simple, he thought. He wished there were some other way to look at it, but there wasn't. Very simple and very final. He remembered two mortar rounds hitting close by, then a third, even closer. And off to his left, he had heard somebody scream. The voice was ragged and clotted up, but he knew instantly that it was Kiawa. He also remembered trying to call crawl toward the screaming. No sense of direction, though, and the field seemed to suck him under, and everything was black and wet and swirling, and he couldn't get his bearings. And then another round hit nearby, and for a few moments, all he could do was hold his breath and duck down beneath the water. Later, when he came up again, there were no more screams. There was an arm and a wristwatch and part of a boot. There were bubbles where Kiawa's head should have been. He remembered grabbing the boot. He remembered pulling hard, but how the field seemed to pull back like a tug of war. He couldn't win. And how he finally had to whisper his friend's name and let go and watch the boot slide away. Then for a long time, there were things he could not remember, various sounds, various smells. Later, he found himself lying on a little rise, face up, tasting the field in his mouth, listening to the rain and explosions and bubbling sounds. He was alone. He had lost everything. He had lost Kiawa and his weapon and his flashlight and his girlfriend's picture. He remembered this. He remembered wondering if he could lose himself. Now, in the dull morning rain, the boy seemed frantic. He waded quickly from spot to spot, leaning down and plunging his hands into the water. He did not look up when Lieutenant Jimmy Cross approached. Right here, the boy was saying, got to be right here. Jimmy Cross remembered the kid's face, but not the name. That happened sometimes. He tried to treat the men as individuals, but sometimes the names just escaped him. He watched the young soldier above his hands, shove his hands into the water. Right here, he kept saying, his movements seemed random and jerky. Jimmy Cross waited a moment, then stepped closer. Listen, he said quietly, the guy could be anywhere. The boy glanced up. Who could? Kiawa, you can't expect... Kiawa's dead. Well, yes. 
The young soldier nodded. So what about Billy? Who? My girl, what about her? This picture was the only one I had. Right here, I lost it. Jimmy Cross shook his head. It bothered him that he could not come up with the boy's name. Slow down, he said. I don't... Billy's picture. I had it all wrapped up. It, it had plastic, so it'll be okay if I can't... Last night we were looking at it, and me and Kiara right here. I know for sure it's right here somewhere. Jimmy Cross smiled at the boy. You can ask her for another one, a better one. She won't send another one. She's not even my girl anymore. She won't. Man, I gotta find it.